Five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I briefly wanted to discuss an amendment which well, I, I will be introducing uh, as soon as the rule on the supplementary appropriation uh, is, uh, is uh, fixed, uh, which deals with an emergency situation uh, for Gulf War veterans who are really not getting the attention and the understanding that they need in order to deal with the very serious crisis of Persian Gulf War Syndrome. As you know, Persian Gulf War Syndrome uh, is right now affecting some 70,000 of the brave men and women who serve this country in the Gulf. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I am a member of the Subcommittee on Human Resources and Intergovernmental Relations, which is chaired by uh, Chris Shays, who has done an outstanding job in bringing before the Subcommittee uh, some of the leading researchers in this country uh, who are searching for an understanding of Persian Gulf War Syndrome. Uh, we have also heard from uh, testimony uh, from the Pentagon and the Veterans Administration. And I must tell you, Mr. Chairman, that the conclusion that I have reached is that for whatever reason, and I say this uh, unhappily, it is my view that neither the Pentagon or the Veterans Administration is going to uh, come up with a solution uh, regarding the problems and the cause of the problems that our Persian Gulf War veterans are suffering from nor, in my view, are they going to come up with an effective treatment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there is some good news. And the good news is that there have been some major scientific breakthroughs in allowing us a better understanding of Persian Gulf War Syndrome. Mr. Chairman, the military theater in the Persian Gulf was an horrendous chemical cesspool, and nobody denies that. It is now acknowledged that our troops there were exposed to chemical warfare agents that had been denied for a while, but it is now acknowledged by all. Uh, in addition, they were exposed to leaded petroleum, uh, a widespread use of pesticides, depleted uranium, and the dense smoke from burning oil wells. In other words, all around them uh, were uh, very dangerous and toxic chemicals. In addition, they were given various vaccines. And perhaps most importantly, as a result of a waiver from the FDA, they were given pyridistamine bromide for anti-nerve gas protection. Mr. Chairman, an increasing number of scientists now believe that the synergistic effect of these chemical exposures plus the pyridistamine bromide may well be the major cause of the health problems affecting our soldiers. The truth is that after five years, there has not yet been, to the best of my knowledge, one significant study coming out of the Pentagon or the VA which shows the relationship between chemical exposure in the Persian Gulf and the Persian Gulf Syndrome. On the other hand, and this is where the good news is, there have been a number of important studies done outside of the Pentagon and the VA which makes this important link. And I will be introducing these studies into the record so that interested members can study them. But let me just very briefly mention a few of them. Dr. Robert Haley of the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, based on studies that he has done, believes the syndromes are due to a subtle brain, spinal cord, and nerve damage caused by exposure to combinations of low-level chemical nerve agents and other chemicals, including pyridistamine bromide in anti-nerve gas tablets, DEET in a highly concentrated insect repellent, and pesticides and flea collars that some of the troops wore. Doctors Mohammed Abu Donye and Tom Kurt of Duke University Medical Center uh, found in, studying, in studies that used chickens that two pesticides used in the Gulf War, DEET and paramethin, and the anti-nerve gas agent pyridistamine bromide, which were given to all troops, were harmless when used alone. However, when used in combination, these chemicals cause neurological deficits in the test animals similar to those reported by some Gulf War veterans. Dr. Setu Samani of the Southern Illinois University School of Medicine states that based on recent experimental proof and historical evidences of symptoms such as impaired concentration in memory, headache, fatigue, and depression of workers in the organophosphate industry, he considers that Gulf War syndrome may be due to low-dose sarin exposure and the intake of pyridistamine and exposures to pesticide and other chemicals. 
Doctors Goth and Nancy Nicholson of the University of Texas, Houston, found that Gulf War veterans who are ill may eventually have their diagnoses linked to chemical exposures in the Persian Gulf, such as oil spills and fires, smoke from military operations, chemicals on clothing, pesticides, chemical pyrophylactic agents, chemical weapons, and others. Dr. Claudia Miller, Dr. William Ray of Texas, also see a connection between the chemicals that our soldiers were exposed to and Gulf War syndrome. Mr. Chairman, this is an important breakthrough. This research provides an important breakthrough, which in my view may finally give us the information that we need to understand Persian Gulf War syndrome, which is affecting 70,000 veterans. This is why later this afternoon I'll be bringing forward an amendment which asks for $10 million to go to the National Institute of Health and Environmental Science so that they can pursue this important area of research. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.